Now, the Social Development Department is hosting a sexual and reproductive justice rights conference in Pretoria, South Africa. The aim of the conference is to deepen and promote access to these rights and serve as an important milestone towards consolidating the population policy related sexual and reproductive health and rights work that has been done in the last 24 years. It also presents an opportunity to chart a new way forward regarding the sexual and reproductive justice discourse in South Africa. Amongst areas of discussion, the conference will deliberate on addressing the legacy of forced sterilization of HIV positive women in public health care institutions in South Africa. People on the move as well as access to health care services for all pregnant women, including migrant women, will also be deliberated upon. Jacques Van Zudem, Chief Director of Population in the National Department of Social Development, joins me from Pretoria for more on this. Thank you so much for joining us on News Now. Good afternoon and thank you for having us. So I don't know, what, can you, what more can you tell us about the ongoing sexual reproductive justice conference currently going on in South Africa? Yes, uh, um, I think uh, maybe to put it in perspective, um, in all countries in, in Africa, the population policy, of course, um, in 10 years ago, in the, audio in the, studios, oh. the, the leadership of the continent gathered in Addis Ababa to negotiate a African Declaration on Population and Development, um, which was then adopted and endorsed in the AU as the Addis Ababa Declaration on Population and Development. So that declaration, amongst others, um, calls for improved sexual and reproductive health and service, services, as well as the recognition of the sexual and reproductive health and rights of all citizens of, of our countries in the continent. So in our monitoring with progress that has been achieved with these commitments, we on the one hand um, are aware that in South Africa we have legislation that um, protects all individuals against any form of discrimination, including in the sexual and reproductive health um, field. Um, it includes the right to access to abortion services. It also um, includes protection from discrimination against sexual orientation. So in the evaluation, you know, we, we, we sort of felt comfortable that the laws that we have in place um, do protect sufficiently protect and promote people's rights. But what we've done over the past um, six months is to engage with people at community level. And we found that many South Africans are reporting that they are not enjoying those rights in their day to day lives. So to a large extent, people are saying, especially people who live in rural areas um, and people from underserved groups would be reporting that, yes, we are aware that we enjoy these rights, but when we go to the local um, health facility or the local social development department, or when we attend school locally, we are not getting the things that we are entitled to. So um, what we did then is we started writing up what are these things that we are hearing. And this week we've convened um, stakeholders from government departments as well as from civil society organizations, particularly youth organizations, to deliberate on what are these stumbling blocks that, that, that um, prohibit many people's access to en the enjoyment of their rights and what should be done by whom in order to overcome those stumbling blocks. Um, certainly there are areas where the government probably has to improve its intervention, but of course with sexual and reproductive justice it, and, and the fact that it places the individual at the center of what we are discussing, um, there are also other stakeholders that have a role to play, the family, the community, um, one's partner, et cetera, et cetera. So, so we are sort of looking at the complex array of things in order to come together with a systematic understanding of what are the challenges, what needs to be done to move forward. And then obviously from the pro conference, there will be a program drafted that will be endorsed by the country's cabinet in the course of the year for further implementation, as well as then obviously for monitoring how we are, how we are progressing with it.
Okay, so when you talk about reproductive justice, we know that women often face legalities and backlashes, and often they are turned away from hospitals and others are denied access. So how is this conference planning to address these issues? Um, well, the, first of all, the conference will get all the issues on the table, and there are really, you know, things that one doesn't didn't even realize was still happening in the country. For example, you've mentioned forced sterilization, which is completely illegal um, and and contrary to any you know code of ethics in the health sector. So the identification, as well as as far as possible, the quantification of the challenges where they occur is the first step of course and then the interventions i'm um, certainly in governance we foresee that interventions will be necessary but also in many instances it's a question of capacity building and training of service providers and service personnel but on the other hand what we also foresee will come out of it is that we really have to do much more advocacy to make South Africans and particularly South African women aware of what their rights are so that they understand that these things cannot be done to me. And if somebody attempts to do it, then I can refuse. Um, and if they've done it, I should report it in order to, um, to, 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 to let the law take its course basically. So, so we anticipate a fairly sort of wide ranging pro program to flow out of it. Um, and um, we also, I mean, given that we have um, had many of these rights and protections in place for almost 30 years, we always also realize that um, a once-off intervention is not going to um, stop, you know, the, the factors that prevent women from enjoying sexual and reproductive justice. It needs to be a program that gets implemented systematically, monitored continuously so that as issues occur, they get addressed and they get continually addressed. You know, that one doesn't sort of, you know, start believing, okay, these things are now sorted out. Um, because, I mean, obviously, they, they don't sort themselves out. You know, it, it needs conscious and ongoing intervention. Definitely a lot of issues to address. Thank you so much, Jacques, for setting so much light on Thank this you. issue. Thank you. Thank you very much.